The National Weather Service has been in charge of issuing public weather forecasts and hazardous weather warnings dating back to the late 1800s. But beginning in the 1940s, a group of suborganizations started to form with the goal of keeping a watch over our nation's waterways. Your brains are about to be flooded with knowledge as meteorology meets hydrology in this week's EarthBeat. All of the United States river basins are closely monitored daily by 13 river forecast centers. One of them is the Mid-Atlantic River Forecast Center and it is located right here in State College. So we are part of the National Weather Service. Um, we work very closely with the weather forecast offices and we're getting our information out. We provide uh, guidance as far as how high the rivers are going to be. The Mid-Atlantic RFC's area of expertise runs from central New York down through Virginia, with over 175 locations that they provide forecasts for on a daily basis. Rob Shedd is the service coordination hydrologist at the center, and Ted Rogers is a hydrometeorologist. Both play a vital role in day-to-day -day operations. While the large waterways are the most closely monitored, there are very few flowing bodies of water in Pennsylvania that are going unnoticed. Gauges are tracking real-time conditions from the Susquehanna River to some of the heavily trafficked areas along Spring Creek and even down to the 8-inch deep Little Lehigh Creek near Allentown. So whether you're talking about small streams or larger river systems, is being able to recognize exactly how much rain is going to be falling and exactly where it's going to be falling. Uh, you know, we have geographical divides, a lot of them are, are mountains. You know, like take Harrisburg, for instance. Harrisburg floods with water that comes from the West Branch and the North Branch. They can have four inches of rain there right over the city and the river might rise a foot, but it's not going to be a big flood. If that water falls east, say over Harper Tavern or in South Central Pea over Williamsburg, you're going to have a flood and you might have a big flood. You know, take an Ellicott City, you move that rain 10 miles in a different direction, and the impact on that uh, is very small. If it falls in one basin, it, it could be a, a minor or moderate flood. If it falls in another basin, it may not flood at all. Some basins react quickly. They don't take as much rain and run off to flood. Other basins, you can have the same amount of rainfall and just get a minor rise instead of a big rise in the flood. Ellicott City is certainly in a, a location that has a long history of flooding. Mm -hmm. Um, so they've had, in the past 120 years or so, they've had about 13 floods that have occurred there. So you do get to understand that some of these areas are a little bit more flood prone. Um, you understand where, the, where those are coming from. And so there is a little bit heightened uh, situational awareness to make sure you understand what's going on in those areas. That situational awareness can also be fed into the river forecasts by the hydrologists in the event that the RFC goes into flood operations. When we see the convective season and thunderstorms, we know the basins that are vulnerable to, to flooding. From our modeling that we do here, the forecasters are intimately involved with making adjustments to the river models, um, partly based on their own experience, partly based on what's been happening on the river over the last several days. Um, in order to be providing the best forecasts that we can in the future. Both Shedd and Rogers also agree that being co-located with the State College National Weather Service office is quite beneficial. Yeah, it's really helpful you know, having the, the weather forecasters here as well. We have a daily briefing every day at 9 a.m. where the, both offices go to. We have one in the RFC at 8 a.m. which just covers the rivers and our concerns and then the FO has one at 9 a.m. and they look at a lot of the same things we do and the, you know when they see the same things we do we have more confidence that things are going to happen. Now it is easy for our minds to be drawn to summer thunderstorms or tropical systems as the lead causes of flooding around these parts. However, there are just as many flood factors to consider in the winter time when snow is on the ground and ice is in the rivers. When you get a, a warm up and rain on top of that, there's potentially lots of problems with things melting, with the ice breaking up, uh, ice jam flooding, uh, you know, as well as decent river flooding from enough rain and enough snow melt. So, depending on the situation, you can have some pretty tough circumstances to deal with in the winter as well. Sometimes you're dealing with two, three, four inches of water sitting in the snowpack, and we know it's going to warm up to say 50 or 55 degrees. How much of that water is going to come out? with an inch or two of rain that falls on top of that. So you could really have the effect of four or five inches of rain 
in the winter with snow coming down as opposed to just four or five inches with a thunderstorm. Now, despite the River Forecast Center's large coverage domain, there are obviously many days during the course of the year where flood operations are not necessary. So what happens on those blue sky days in the office? We're providing a forecast uh, update every day, but uh, we'll have time available for training, um, for developing our models locally, um, software development. Uh, we might be meeting with partners, uh, working with them to understand what their needs are. Um, so we've got a lot of opportunities for what we consider to be development time on, on quiet days. One of the main goals of the River Forecast Centers is to extend their forecasts out in time. Right now, their basic forecasts go out three days, but in certain communities, there are requests and desires to be able to get river and stream information a little bit farther out into the future. So we're trying to provide a little bit of confidence um, and doing some work with probabilistic forecasting. Um, so basically being able to say that in the next week, there's a 30% chance of flooding in a particular area. Another aspect is flood inundation mapping, um, where as opposed to just saying, saying the river is going to be at 23 feet, for instance, you can go in on a map and say, what's 23 feet mean at my location? And you can see how high the river is going to be, whether my neighborhood is going to be impacted. For the latest river forecasts and flood guidance, go to the RFC's website. In central and eastern Pennsylvania, weather.gov slash MARFC. In western Pennsylvania, weather.gov slash OHRFC. For Weather World, I'm Ben Reppert.